Hi there, my name is Lynn Marie Smith, and this is my story. I grew up in a really, really tiny town, in a farm town, actually, in Pennsylvania. I'm sure none of you have heard of it. It's called Danville. And a town full of cows and pastures and, you know, one stoplight, not a lot going on. Um, and it was a pretty magical little place to, to grow up. Um, but as I got older, it wasn't so magical. I felt bored, I felt restricted. Um, I knew from an early age that I wanted to leave the farm town and move to New York City. That was my dream. When I was five years old, my grandmother brought me to New York City, or I, maybe six years old. Um, she brought me to New York City to see uh, the Easter show at Radio City Music Hall. And I walk into this theater and it was just magnificent. This huge golden egg on the stage and the show starts and the egg cracks open. And this man, Liberace, comes out in his long cape and this, you know, golden candelabra and piano. And I was like, that is it. That's who I'm going to be. That's what I want. And so my dream came true when I moved to New York City right out of high school. Pretty much a culture shock, very much a culture shock, actually, coming from cows and pastures, a very sheltered existence, moving to this the city that never sleeps. And up until that point, I really had no experience with drugs or alcohol. Um, I was really focused in, in high school, and, and, and there wasn't a lot going on in my town, at least not that I knew of. So I really didn't have a lot of you know, experience with, with anything, really. I was fresh off the turnip truck, you could say, when I moved to New York City. So I started acting to school, and like you do anywhere, going to any college or moving to a new town, you have a, a whole new chapter of your life begins, and meeting different friends, and uh, the, the parties I was going to, in acting school were just, it was crazy. I, anywhere you were, there would be drugs, there'd be alcohol. I mean, the, the apartments were these beautiful Manhattan apartments of, of friends that I was going to school with, and there'd be ecstasy and cocaine and, and pills and powders, and you name it, it was there. So there was this moment, defining moment for me, where I was like, whoa, you know, Lynn, you're not in Kansas anymore. What are you going to do? And I had never made the decision that I, I didn't do drugs up until that point, but I had never made the decision. Like, it wasn't this clear cut, I'm not using drugs. I'm never going to do that. So when it was thrown in front of me and there was this little pill with a smiley face on it called ecstasy, and my friends were there and saying, like, come on, we're going to have a really good time. Come on. I was like, why not? You know, a pill. A pill with a smiley face? Like, what's that going to do to me, you know? Like, that's gonna kill me. So I put the little pill on my tongue and swallowed it. And had no idea at the time, but that one pill and my life was changed forever. Um, it was just this magical feeling that I had when I did it, and I, it took me away from my insecurities because as much as I seemed to have it together on the outside, I was this scared little girl inside. I, I didn't know really who I was. I didn't think I was cool enough or pretty enough or savvy enough. So I found this drug, and I was like, wow, I can be close to my friends and all of this. It was just kind of this mind-blowing experience that I wanted to experience again before that night was even over. So. So I dabbled in it a little more, but it wasn't until after I graduated um, from acting school and thrust into the real world that I just started to, to go crazy. I wasn't able to, to handle the rejection from going on auditions and being told, you know, you're too fat, you're too thin, your ears are too big, you're not right. I didn't have the coping skills to deal with my emotions, so it was really difficult for me to be thrust into this world and ha being rejected. and and not really having a secure feeling of who I was, not feeling good enough. So I was searching, you know, on the outside. And for me, it was the drugs. I gravitated towards them and that lifestyle. And before I knew it, I wasn't only using ecstasy, but I was trying cocaine, acid, shrooms, ketamine, alcohol, of course, to wash them all down with. You know, it just massive amounts of chemicals, putting them into my system having no sense of myself. It happened really quickly for me. It wasn't this gradual, you know, 
this gradual thing. I mean, within months of diving back into this world and going to clubs and hanging out with, you know, my circle of friends became criminals and people who were drug dealers. And before I knew it, I'd spiraled out of control and had lost myself completely. Lost myself completely thinking that these drugs could fill me up somehow, could fill up the holes, the voids in my life. And it wasn't the case. I never felt that high again, that first time. I was always chasing it, always thinking that it was gonna make me feel good. And all it did was make me feel worse and worse. I lost weight, I had panic attacks. I thought my life was over. I, I, I was thinking of suicide, thinking my life was over at, at 22 years old. And it, it was really a scary thing. And, and the turning point for me was um, I was put into a, a psychiatric ward not by my own <laughs> choice, but uh, I, completely out of my mind on drugs, had lost all sense of myself. I was running out in the streets. I thought I was dead. I thought I was a ghost. I had no sense of who I was anymore. I had lost myself. I had given myself away to these drugs. So my mom put me um, into a psychiatric ward, or the state was going to commit me. And I spent two weeks in there, heavily drugged on legal drugs and sedated. and and locked in a confined room, being told that I was damaged, that I, I had you know, brain damage and I had caused all of these awful things to myself. And it was the turning point in my life because I was looking at my brain image and there's this image of my brain on the screen because the doctors prefer, performed a neuro spec scan and all of these big dark areas that looked like holes, like my brain looked like cobwebs. And it was in that moment that I knew that I had a decision to make. I could I either go back to that life and do more drugs and end up dead or jailed, institutionalized, but there was gonna be no happy ending for me. Or I could choose a new road and and forge ahead and try to figure this out and, and, and make a new life for myself. And I chose that second road and it wasn't easy. And this is eight years later, seven years later, and it's still a choice. Every day I wake up and I say, I'm not gonna use, and I'm gonna use my life. And from that, uh, the turning point, I went public with my story on MTV and Oprah, and I just started sharing. I travel around the country talking to kids in rehabs and jails, college campuses, sharing my story. And it's more than sharing my story, it's, it's um, inspiring people to see their lives as precious and powerful because they really are and it is our choice what we do with them and I played Russian roulette for so long with my life and I'm so lucky and blessed that I have a second chance and now I'm using that second chance to the best of my ability and it's taken me a while to say this but I love who I am and I believe that once I found that, I found myself and I have my own love for me, I can do anything in this world and that's what I want to inspire other people to realize um, because I don't think it's about the drugs, I don't think it's about uh, the symptoms. I think the root cause of me for sure going out and looking for these drugs and outside sources for happiness was my lack of self-worth and belief in myself, my lack of self-love that led me to keep abusing myself, that led me to keep searching outside for happiness. And once I really turned inward and, and found found who I was, and it was hard and it was ugly and it wasn't easy, um, but it was the best decision I have ever made. And, and uh, from doing that, what I get to do now and, and, and my life has blossomed into something that I never thought possible. Traveling the world, I write books. My first book, Rolling Away, came out a couple of years ago, I'm working on a second one about recovery and healing. And if one of us can do it, I know all of us can do it because I think we're all made of the same stuff. And so if I could say anything to you today would be to love who you are, no matter what. And just start off by today saying some nice things to yourself. Look in the mirror and say, wow, you're beautiful. Even if it doesn't feel real at first, just try it, fake it until it, it feels real. Because once you have the love for yourself, you have, you have the world. Honestly, you have the world. So I'm here to tell you that you can, uh, you can, you, you can, um, I'm here to tell you that a second chance can save your life um, and to make to make lemonades from lemons, to, to see your experience as something beautiful that you can use to heal yourself and heal others, and that we all are fighting some kind of battle.
that we're all here together, that we're all in this together, whether it's drugs or, or alcohol or divorce or, or whatever you're dealing with in your life, you're not alone. We're, we're all in this together and to realize you're not alone and, and to, to use your life in a powerful way because you are here for a reason. Whether you like, like to think that or not, you really are. So, so use your life and I love you guys and I love me and uh, God bless you.